Taking lunch uh, orders, Mr. Reed. Anything? No, thanks. Food laws usually exist for safety reasons, but we all know that there are some strange laws on the books. So here are the top 15 weirdest food laws in the U.S. Are you kidding me? Indiana and watermelon. This is going to be the happiest day of my life. Is there anything more refreshing and satisfying than a big, juicy <laughs> slice of watermelon on a hot summer day? When you're out and about with a picnic basket in hand looking for the perfect spot to savor your delicious fruit, a park sounds like the destination of choice. However, if you're in Indiana, that option isn't always available. In Beach Grove, it is illegal to eat watermelon in parks. Why such a silly ban? It all started when park staff realized that the watermelon's sharp rind would often punch through garbage bags and cause big messes that were hard to pick up. To prevent the situation from happening again, an ordinance was put into motion and the fruit was banned. Apparently though, the ordinance isn't really enforced that much and no one has had a legal issue after eating watermelon. So munch away, but just make sure you throw your rinds elsewhere. You never know who's watching. You guys sure like watermelon. One bite? Georgia and fried chicken. I've never had fried chicken in my life. To be honest, there are some foods that would just feel wrong to eat with a fork. When it comes to pizza, burgers, and even corn on the cob, there's just this kind of unspoken rule that the only utensils you should use are your hands. But funnily enough, in Gainesville, Georgia, there is an actual law declaring that eating fried chicken with a knife and a fork is a crime. This southern town, also known as the poultry capital of the world, takes its chicken very seriously, and it can only be eaten with your fingers, or else. The law was created back in 1960 and even though it was meant as a joke, it is still a very much respected today. Cartman, you ate the skin off of every piece of chicken! Well, I saved you all the chicken part. Wisconsin and margarine. Can't believe it's not butter. Neither can I. Turn the tub around! The debate between whether margarine is as good as butter ruffles a lot of feathers, especially in Wisconsin, a state with high regards for the dairy industry. It's been such an intense argument there that to this day, there is still a very serious ban on margarine in every state institution, including schools, hospitals, and prisons. Back when margarine was first introduced in the U.S. in the 1800s, it was marketed as a cheaper version of butter, which didn't sit right with people at first. But after the original ban was lifted, it slowly won the hearts of Americans everywhere. Well, everywhere except Wisconsin, of course. It's the only remaining state to ban margarine. With this info in hand, it's a pretty safe bet that Wisconsin isn't the biggest fan of the stuff. Because of some health concerns and budget issues, some institutions have found a way to serve margarine, but unless they know the loopholes, everyone is served butter. What should I do? Please pass the butter! Mississippi and portion control. I'll take the cheeseburger meal. Would you like to make it an extra large meal? Uh. We can probably all agree that in America, big portions reign supreme. Super size, jumbo, extra large, we can never seem to get enough. However, some states have taken the matter into their own hands and decided to ban supersized portions. Mississippi, on the other hand, went in another direction. They made it illegal to make it illegal. Basically, it passed a law that makes it illegal for any county or town to pass a law restricting portion sizes. The law states that the government shouldn't micro-regulate citizens' dietary decisions and everybody should be free to order whatever they like. Even though Mississippi has one of the highest obesity rates in the U.S., the law has stuck. Dubbed as the anti-Bloomberg bill in honor of New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg, who tried to ban the sale of supersized soft drinks, the portion control law lets you make your own food decisions. No. Yes. No. You sure? It's only 29 cents more. Yes. Connecticut and pickles. Look! He's been hiding the pickles under his tongue the whole time. There is so much to know about pickles. For example, some people might not be aware of how relatively easy the process is to make them. Or better yet, some people might not even know that they're made from cucumbers. And for those who aren't from the state of Connecticut, you might not know that a pickle can't be called a pickle unless it bounces. Yes, a little random, but the state is very serious about its pickles. While it isn't technically an actual law, that would be too hilarious. There are still several statues and regulations put in place that enforce this idea, which keeps vendors from selling subpar pickles. Mine, mine, off. 
Arkansas, and sandwich shops. I think he wants to communicate. Unless it's to warn someone about an immediate road hazard, no one likes to use a car horn. It's disruptive, loud, and quite frankly, sometimes downright insulting. But from time to time, it's necessary, especially if someone is about to ram into your car or is stopped at a green light. Well, that is, unless you're in Little Rock, Arkansas, and you happen to be driving past a sandwich shop after 9 p.m. If that's the case, then according to the law, it's illegal to honk your horn. And it's not only sandwich shops, but anywhere else they sell cold drinks. The reasoning behind this law isn't all clear, but it has something to do with car horns being a noise disturbance for the diners of shops. <laughs> Delaware and picnics. Well, it sure is fun going on a picnic, isn't it, Peter? There's nothing better when it's nice outside than going on a picnic. On a blanket, on the beach, at a picnic table, any spot is the right spot to enjoy delicious food and nice weather. Every spot, except for one place in Delaware, the highways. It might sound like an obvious picnic no-no, but the government of Delaware still felt the need to make this an actual law, meaning there must have been more than one occurrence of this picnic shenanigans. The law dictates that no one can tailgate within the limits of Fenwick Island, whether it's in a vehicle or a picnic on a street or highway, as it could cause traffic jams. Of course, that's the last thing you would want, especially during rush hour. But just to make sure, you'd have to find out if light snacking while driving on the highway is considered illegal, because it would be a real shame to pass on those long drive snacks. You're right, buddy. I am a survivor, and I will get us to the picnic. North Carolina and cooking grease. I'm sorry, what? Stealing is bad, everybody knows that. No matter what you steal, it should be illegal. But there are some things that feel like they should be punished a little more severely than if you steal, let's say, cooking grease. But in North Carolina, cooking grease is a sacred thing, and it's considered a crime to take it without asking. Your punishment will depend on how much of the stuff you steal. If you take under $1,000 worth, it'll be a class one misdemeanor, which is along the lines of assault or battery, landing you up to 150 days in jail. But if you steal quantities over $1,000, you're looking at a felony, which could set you back a couple of years. It might seem a bit intense to send people to jail for stealing grease, but since it's actually used in many things like beauty products and animal feed, the market needs to be respected. Let's see if you know what you're talking about. Indiana and soda. Soda? Oh, yeah! Mom never lets me have any. <laughs> We've already talked about Indiana and its ban on watermelon in parks, and now get ready for the soda pop ban. Indeed, if you ever find yourself in a liquor store and you fancy a soda to go along with your purchase, then you will be out of luck, since it's illegal for a liquor store to sell refrigerated soda. But the law doesn't end there. It's also illegal for them to sell chilled mineral water, charged water, grenadine, ginger ale, and flavoring extracts. It's as if they were trying to stop every classic cocktail from being made. But when you look at other laws in Indiana, it kind of makes perfect sense. Grocery stores can't sell cold beer. In other words, you can buy your beer at your grocery store, but if you want it cold, you need to go somewhere else. Do you like soda? Florida and dress codes. You can't wear a tank top two days in a row, and you can only wear your hair in a ponytail once a week. Usually, if you work in the food industry, it's up to your employer to decide what you should wear to work. Whether it's a uniform or a dress code, you have to dress according to the company's standards. However, in Broward County, Florida, what you wear is according to the law. It's targeted toward mobile food vendors and dictates what they can and can't wear to do their job. Apparently, food vendors are not allowed to dress provocative in any way, as it could cause an obstruction to traffic or be a driving hazard. The list of acceptable and unacceptable clothing goes on and on, and while some of the restrictions make sense, it's hard to believe someone would ever work at their food truck wearing a bathing suit, even if they could. Bunch of prudes. You know, Oscar's allowed to wear sandals, but I'm not allowed to wear open to a shoes. California and frog legs. I don't want him to go! 
Why not? It's not everyone who's a fan of frog legs, but it's still a thing, especially overseas. This delicacy is rather controversial in many parts of the world, but in California, there's a very weird and specific law regarding the type of frogs that can be eaten. Once you enter a frog into a frog jumping contest, it has immunity from ending up on your table. According to the law, you can have in your possession as many competition frogs as you'd like, but when they die, you cannot, under any circumstances, eat them. Instead, if they happen to die or get killed, you need need to destroy them as soon as possible and not use them for any other purpose. Since frog jumping competitions are a pretty popular pastime for some Californians, this might be the best way to save the frogs from ending up on plates. Stab, 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 die, stab, stab, die, die, death, kill! Alaska and Moose. And who's the funky looking donkey over there? That's Sven. Uh huh. Whenever you visit a place with a lot of wildlife, it's always important to be informed of the laws to avoid making a faux pas. Most regulations are similar and all involve stuff like not feeding the animals. But in Alaska, they take things even further than this. You cannot give any kind of alcohol to a moose. A little specific and a little weird, yes, but it turns out the law was put in place for a very specific reason. Back in 2007, a moose, now named Buzzwinkle by the media, somehow found its way into a local brewery's supply during the holidays and was seen stumbling down the streets, getting tangled in Christmas lights, tripping over the whole nine. Since moose are considered to be one of the world's most dangerous animals, they are no longer allowed to celebrate in any way. Bum, 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 I'm a moose. Alabama and ice cream thieves. Everybody likes ice cream. It's always a nice, fun treat to indulge in and a great treat on a summer day. On the other hand, no one likes a thief, which is why in Alabama it is allegedly illegal for you to walk down the street with an ice cream cone in your back pocket. But why would you even put an ice cream cone in your back pocket to begin with? Well, back when the main way of transportation was horses, thieves would put ice cream in their pockets to lure horses away and steal them without ever being charged. While today most people aren't trying to steal horses away and prefer to eat their ice cream the traditional way, Alabama still takes this issue to heart. Welcome back to the world. Grab a spoon. Iowa and ice cream trucks. Ice cream man, wait! You're fired! Ice cream is so tasty. It deserves another entry on this list. But who knew there were a bunch of rules attached to it, depending on where you live? As the weather gets warmer and people start going out more, it's inevitable that you will eventually stop for ice cream somewhere. Do you remember, as a kid, running down the street the second you heard the ice cream truck coming down the street? Yeah, well, kids in Iowa have yet to experience that feeling since ice cream trucks are banned there. Today, some people argue that they've seen some trucks roaming around, and the law is slowly becoming less strict, but chances are you won't find one in every neighborhood. Here's a little tip. If you like ice cream, don't visit Indiana in the summer. You'll probably end up being disappointed. I'm looking for a car that's been tricked out to look like an ice cream truck. Damn it. Kansas and vending machines. They're too crinkly. You're kind of funny. We've all been there. You go to the vending machine to get a snack, put your money in, and bam, your bag of chips gets stuck. What you would usually do is give it a little nudge in the hopes of making the bag fall. And if that didn't work, a good old smack on the glass or a good shake would do the trick. However, if you're in Kansas, you might want to refrain from doing that as it is illegal to hit a vending machine. So even if it shamelessly stole your money, there is very little you can legally do to get it back. Just sit back and hope your snack magically decides to come down. There's no use crying over some wasted loot Loose change, right? Especially in Kansas. Ah, I'm stuck! Help me! <laughs> We're open 24-7. Just tap or click for another great video, hit that subscribe button, and ring that bell. And hey, leave us a comment.